Hi everyone, this is Candy from Class Bay, and today we're gonna be looking at HTML basics. So what are these HTML basics? First of all, we're gonna look at the HTML page structure. And I'm gonna walk us through on how you can structure your page before you can begin to write your codes. So let me power my VS code and walk us through in a bit. So I'm gonna create a HTML file. I'm gonna call this file index.html. Now, while structuring your page, you're gonna have to tell the VS Code or the Visual Studio Code Editor what type of document you're trying to write because this VS Code has several extensions. It has the JavaScript, the Python, and so many other languages embedded in it. So you need to be specific on what type of document you wanna write. So and how we can do that is first, you start with the less than sign An exclamation mark and you declare your document type this doc type here means document type this doc is short form for document and type is type so what this is saying is what type of document are you trying to write so that is what this doc type is implying so we're gonna say HTML document. By doing this, you've been able to structure your file and you've been able to tell the VS Code that you actually want to write a HTML type of document. Secondly, we're going to be looking at the difference between an opening and a closing tag. And you will know that it's very necessary because Someone might give you access to his or her GitHub account to extract some files and make changes. You should be able to know where that, where some tags started and where they actually ended so that you know where exactly you're going to make the changes. So how do we recognize an opening tag? First of all, let's say I want to write a P tag. So the opening of this P tag is going to be a less than sign, the name of the tag, and a greater than sign. So this is an opening P tag. Now, I know the question on your mind would be, what would the closing tag look like? So you're also gonna start with a less than sign, a forward slash, The name of the tag and the greater than sign. So anytime you see any tag, it could be a button tag, it could be a div tag, it could be a h1, a h2, or a h3 tag. A greater than sign, a less than sign, and the name of the tag. But anytime you see a less than sign, a forward slash, the name of the tag, and the greater than sign should be able to know that is the closing tag. This is the closing while this is the opening tag. Next, we are going to look at HTML element. The whole of this line 2 is a P tag. When can we refer to this P as an element? It's simply when they have text content embedded in them. Or when they have text content sitting between the opening tag and the closing tag, that's when you can refer to this P tag as an element because it contains text content. For example, I could say this is paragraph 1. Now you can no longer refer to the whole of this line 2 as just a P tag. You can now refer to it as an element because it has text content sitting between the opening tag and the closing tag. But the moment I get rid of this, it becomes a P tag. If I add this back, 
it becomes a p element so that is it for tags and elements the next thing we're going to be looking at is attributes now what are attributes attributes are those things that give extra meaning or additional information about things or about elements my college teacher could know me as candy with black hair but the moment the student is able to identify me as being female my gender now being female has given additional information about me so my college teacher will not know me as only candy with a black hair. He could also identify me as the female candy with a black hair. So my gender has given additional information about me. This is what attributes do. They give extra information about elements. Now we have two of its kind, the class attributes and the ID attributes. Now, we could write the class attribute this way, class, the name of the class, let's say, para1 or p class attributes. And we have the id attributes written this way, id, let's say, id hyphen class. But the difference between these two is this class attribute can take as many class attributes as possible while the id in its unique way can only take one value at a time that's the difference between class attributes and id attributes and what these attributes are doing is they are now giving you extra or additional information about this p tag so lastly i'm gonna be looking at white spaces now i could actually write i could actually break this whole line 5 code this way while it's being right down to the browser the browser is going to compress it to be one element so don't get confused when you see codes being broken down this way while rendering them they're still going to render scene unless being affected by the CSS to do otherwise. So I'm going to show you what I mean by that. If I render this onto the browser, you can see right here that this is paragraph 3 rendered as one element or as a single sentence, irrespective of how it was being broken down here so that is what happens in case you see lines of code being broken down don't get confused they're still gonna render perfectly on the browser unless being told to do otherwise by the CSS so guys that, that will be all for today subscribe to our YouTube channel hit on the like button you can also visit us at capacitybay.org and I'm gonna see you in the next video